A promising eight-year-old from St. James, Tiana Brown, is laid to rest in St. Catherine. Her school says she was among its top students. Tiana, though being small, would stand up for herself. She was also easy to get emotional and end up crying if she got frustrated. She was a top reader and was always neck to neck with the other achievers. This also led to her being asked to handle responsibilities in the class, like marking books, helping the slower students, monitoring her classmates when the teacher had to leave the class during distributing lunches. She had one of the highest averages at the end of the year. The late child's older brother wept. <laughs> A relatively large picture of cartoon character Dora took up almost the entire front of the funeral program. But Tiana Brown will not be watching Dora and playing with her dolls here on earth anymore. She died at Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James on February 25, 2023, ending her battle with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which can cause serious damage to joints and limit activities such as walking. Tiana's final moments on earth were difficult. It's heartbreaking to watch your family members suffer from illness and be powerless to help them recover. Rest assured, there is no such pain in heaven. There is no, no sorrow there, no more burden to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there. There was a lot of grief at the Thanksgiving service, which was held on Sunday afternoon, April 2, at the Luadas Vale Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Catherine. The pain brought Tiana's mother to the floor. Tiana's older brother, Sanjay Brown, yelled her name. Weeping was not the only show of love for the eight-year-old. The relatively large gathering also was. Many traveled several miles from the parish of St. James where Tiana lived to reach the church in the Loadersville division where Tiana has paternal relatives. At the time Tiana transitioned from this life, she was enrolled at Bickerseth Primary and Infant School in St. James. One of her teachers, who did the remembrance, took the congregation back to when Tiana started attending the school's infant department at age four. She was so small in stature that everyone thought she was not ready for school. Tiana was very shy and distanced herself from all the other students. Her first two weeks in school was not her favorite. She would cry in the mornings and sometimes during the day. You could hear Tiana crying from across the block and she would often say, Me want Sanjay. Sometimes she would make attempts to run to the grade one block where her brother's class was whenever she saw the opportunity. For the first two weeks, you couldn't get Tiana to put her lunch kit at the lunch table. She would just hold it in her lap for the entire day. Maybe she thought the other kids would take her snacks. I remember how loved she was by everyone and how she easily learned new things. At the age of four going on to five, her writing was exceptional and she enjoyed doing her schoolwork. Tiana eventually adapted to what, at the time, was a new environment. Tiana gradually started adapting to her classmates and the school environment. She was still a little reserved, but she would play at times and participate in class. Tiana entered grade one and two while COVID restrictions were still strongly in effect. Students had many challenges connecting to classes. Tiana's class mainly used Zoom as Google Classroom was posing a problem for most students. About half the class had proper connections and Tiana was fortunate to have parents who did everything they could to make sure she never missed class. Mr. Parkinson, her grade two teacher, stated that Tiana stood out as one of the few who had their cameras on. He said she was always quiet and hardly smiled, even with efforts to make her relaxed. 
but even with a bad connection, she would comment if called on and would always complete her work. Tiana's light in academics and leadership could not be dimmed, not even by one of the world's most devastating pandemics, COVID-19, which killed millions and left schools and several other institutions in a tailspin worldwide. Tiana, stand up for herself. She was also easy to get emotional and end up crying if she got frustrated. She was a tough reader and was always neck to neck with the other achievers. This also led to her being asked to handle responsibilities in the class, like marking books, helping the slower students, monitoring her classmates when the teacher had to leave the class during distributing lunches. She had one of the highest averages at the end of the year. She was loved by both teachers and schoolmates, who would often make comments about her height. Unfortunately, in September of grade three, there were signs that she had health issues. Her parents would often lift her to get to school as she loved being there. This got worse over time with her missing most of the term in the hospital. On February 26, 2023, we got the bad news of her passing. She will be missed by the Bickerstead School family. We will continue to pray and ask God to grant you peace. For his eyes are on the sparrow. And I know The principal at Tiana's school, Robert Gordon, did not miss the opportunity to commend the bereaved parents, Lorna Gale and Tyrone Brown. He said they are examples for others to follow. I would like to extend condolences to Tiana's immediate family, extended family, families and friends. Now, I was observing the way Tiana's parents treat her and the other siblings on a daily basis. Sometimes the father will take the children to school, sometimes the mother. And I always notice the care they take and how neat the children are and how attentive the parents are. And I think that is very commendable. And we need a lot of parents like that in the community today. And I want to say thank you for the part that you play in her life and the other children's life. And a number of parents can take a leaf from their book. Filling a slack, Shona K. Henningham delivered the eulogy. Tiana was absolutely gorgeous on the inside and out. You could feel her energy when she was close. She was born November 23rd, 2014 at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James. To loving parents, Lorna Gale and Tyrone Brown. She was a middle child between her eldest brother, Sandre, and her younger brother, Teddy. But she was no pushover. She stood her ground and was frequently in charge of her brothers. At times, her bossiness even extended to her cousins. Tiana was affectionately called TT by close relatives and friends. She brought joy and laughter into her lives and the lives of others. Tiana, whose relatives stated that she has left a huge emptiness in their hearts, was also said to be kind-hearted. It's going to be dead when Lucy still the grave is victory. One of the persons who delivered a tribute is Pastor Theophilus Thomas from Sandy Ground New Testament Church of God in a section of Loalesville Division known as Top Hill District. 
he attended to support one of his church members, Herman Brown, who is the late child's grandfather. Pastor Thomas made note of the school's declaration that Tiana was among the top students in her class. I know it must be very, very hard for the parents of this child who have lost her in such a young age. I came in not long ago and I been listening to what has been said of this child. Very, very promising. And to have lost her at this early age, it must have brought a great pain to the parents. But we want to say, be strong. God knows everything best. He gives and he takes away. He is the potter. We are the clay. We don't know what could have turned around that this child could have been something else. But in all things, somebody said we need to give thanks. It's very hard in certain situations to give thanks, but that's the word of God. He said we are to give thanks in everything. And let us just take heart and console ourselves. I say to the family again, be courageous. Don't give up. Jesus said, if I go, I will come again and receive you myself. Let us trust the Lord. All is not lost. Again, we present you in the hand of God and we know he's going to come through for you. Cheer up. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you much. Pastor Dean Thompson has developed a reputation for delivering thought-provoking and well-organized sermons in Loidesville, and on this occasion, he did not miss. He encouraged Christians to live an upstanding life, one that would pull even children closer to God. We could be guilty of preventing our children from going to Jesus, and we can do that in many ways. How can we prevent the children from going to Jesus? The first, first way I would suggest to you, Many of us are Christians, but there are many Christians who are not giving the right example. Many Christians are not living as all Christians ought to be living. Are you with me? And by so doing, they discourage others from, from wanting to follow Jesus. You have Christians who, 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 in their community, they keep malice with people. You're not with me. Christians who go to church and pray and sing and, and, and have wonderful worship. But when they go home, they still have a neighbor next door. They're not talking to. The man is against. They don't talk to them because they're a junk crow. You're not with me. You're not with me. Why not? Why, when, when we as Christians don't give the right example, we prevent others from accepting Jesus. We prevent children from accepting Jesus from wanting to follow Jesus. Another way in which we, we, we prevent the children from going to Jesus 
is that some of us treat the children like they do not matter like they are not worth our time and even at church sometimes we behave, behave like children don't exist we we plan the programs for the adults we don't plan for the children and many times many times preachers are preaching and they're preaching to adults but they don't recognize that children are sitting there and they're not they're not preaching in a way for the children to understand and accept jesus too are you with me so 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 jesus wants us to to look out for the children jesus wants us to look out for the children who are around us and allow them to come to him he turned to the bible listen what ephesians chapter 6 1 and 2 says it says children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may go, go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth but hear what it says to the fathers to the parents fathers do not exasperate your children instead bring them up in the training and instruction of the lord fathers don't provoke your children to wrath don't get them to the point where they can become frustrated you know sometimes we we have our children and we we try to get them to be perfect and we we any little mistake one lick send them across the room are you with me we have we have persons who who, who serve who, who, have, who have been in church for years and the children grow up in church but then the children after a while don't want, have, don't want to have anything to do with church because oftentimes we have the children and we we are the, we, we determine that the children must be perfect and they see that we are hypocrites because we are saying one thing and doing another and we are forcing them to be perfect and many times they turn away from church and turn away from god jesus says we must not prevent the children from coming to him another way in which we prevent our children from going to jesus you know many times many times through the holy spirit our children start to receive some conviction from god and they want to give their heart their heart to jesus and sometimes we parents we tell them that they are too young to serve god are you with me we tell them that they are too young to serve god but brothers and sisters when we look at what is happening in this world today so many things are happening to our children now brothers and sisters my encouragement to us all today as we grieve the loss the passing of young tiana let us lift our heart to jesus because he is the one who gives us hope when life turns upside down the child's grandmother whose name was given as miss miriam delivered a song she was joined by the lady in the red dress, Tiana's aunt, Merlin Brown, who was among the main organizers of the funeral. I keep searching and searching until I shall find our mighty Jesus here somewhere around God's throne. Other persons who participated in the Thanksgiving service included Patricia Gale, who read the first Bible lesson, and Tanisha Edwards, who read the second. Representatives of Empire Funeral Services made a presentation to the bereaved family, including the parents who are shown on your screen, the third and second persons to the left. A member of the church, Verna White Brown, prayed for the bereaved family. Father, I'm asking you to be with these members. We pray, God, that you may stir their hearts today to your words. Those who do not accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives, we are asking you, God, that you will speak to them and they will listen so that they can turn it all over to you today. Father, we know that when they go home too, it will be a different situation. But God, I am asking you to fill the empty spaces that this girl used to occupy in the homes and in the school. God, because you are a great comforter. So, Lord, we pray that you may be with them now and help them to turn it all over to you. The end of the prayer signaled the end of the church proceedings. Paul Bearers, all men, young and strong, lifted the casket above their heads. <laughs> Mighty Flyers marching band provided music. 
as the procession made its way from the church to the nearby Loadesville Cemetery. There is the child's father helping to place the casket on the grave. The late child's brother, Sanjay, would have preferred to see her a week. There was a lot of crying. The casket had a lot of gifts, toys, money, and food. Commit her body to the earth, earth to earth, ash to ash, dust to dust. And here she'll rest until the resurrection that shall take place at the last day when Jesus shall come. Let us continue singing as we ask the workmen to cover this too. I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is over. On the bright and gorgeous morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, on the glory of the resurrection day, when the chosen ones shall gather from the world beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder of the day. In Luadisville, St. Catherine, this is the Jamaica Beacon.